So what are the dual occupancy requirements? My name is Colin Frager from Council Approval Group. If you're thinking about a dual occupancy, congratulations, it is my favorite investment strategy. There are, however, a lot of requirements that you need to, uh, need to be aware of and a lot of hoops that you need to jump through if you are thinking about getting council approval for a dual occupancy. So my best advice is really to get advice and that is to book in for a free consult with one of our team at the council approval group. However, if you do want a few specific details, then make sure you grab your copy of the ultimate guide of getting council approval. And in here, we've got actually three pages on dual occupancy and we go through some of the, the rules and requirements that council will be looking at when they're looking at your project. From somebody, I've done actually 10 plus of these myself personally, as well as thousands for clients now. Uh, my, my encouragement for you is to, to see if you can get what we call a dual occupancy subdivision uh, that would allow you to separate the land, separate the title and be able to sell one, reduce the debt levels uh, and massively boost your cash flow for you and your family that you're getting on that property. If you can't do that, you may also then look at a standard dual occupancy. Remember when you're looking at these requirements, when you do find them, uh, that you'll be looking at a few different options. Uh, one is, and maybe I can bring it actually up on my screen here, I'll just switch it, switch over and draw you something just so you're aware of the few different options that you have with dual occupancy and their requirements. So um, the first one is probably the standard one, which you see typically when you, you pull up at, a, at a, a street and you see a property and you think, oh, that's a dual occupancy. And what people most typically think a dual occupancy is, is effectively a duplex, uh, a, a house which has a common wall. But also remember that a dual occupancy can be detached. So that's an attached dual occupancy. You can also have a detached one. And if you can pull that one off, it's personally my favorite because it does create a better living space for the occupants. Uh, you might have, uh, that could be an attached dual occupancy. See how I just did that by mistake? That's actually a trick about attached dual occupancies. Um, you can attach the carport, uh, but presuming that they are detached, uh, what it does is does allow more private open space, more landscaped area. There's a lot of things to talk about and we don't have time today. So what I would really love for you to do is if you are serious about finding out more about the dual, occupant, dual occupancy requirements for your property, please book in for a consultation with one of our team at the council approval group. And we'll talk to you then. My name is Colin Frager and I wish you every success.